over to Ian and the band. <laughs> Grief Share is a support group ministry that helps people heal from the pain of grief. The Grief Share video seminars work with exercises and small group discussions, give participants encouragement and useful advice. Listen to a few testimonies of what Grief Share meant for some of our Doxa Day partners. In Grief Share, I learned that joy is not the absence of pain, but that joy, peace and pain can coexist. I'm forever grateful for the course that led me to a path of healing and for new perspective that enable me to support friends that are working through grief. If you know of people in our church or community who are grieving the death of a loved one, tell them about Grief Share. You can also register for Grief Share after church in the foyer. You fill my heart with songs of praise Only you can, only you can Jesus, you're the only reason That I'm even breathing I am wide awake My heart beats Only for your glory My heavens reach Up for you, holy My soul sings Father, you are holy And I 
crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And if that's not the definition of a glorious day, I don't know what is. What a privilege, privilege it is to be able to worship the God that gave himself for us so that we can live and live Let's just close our eyes and pray together. Father God, tonight, we just want to thank you, Father. We stand with open hearts and with thankful hearts in front of you today, Father, for what you have done for us. Thank you for laying your life down for us so that we can live, but not only live, live life of abundance. Father, abundant blessings from your hand. Father, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the opportunity to be here together as a family. And thank you for what you do in us, but not only in us, through us each and every day. We thank you. Amen. You're welcome to take your seat. Just the next part of our, our worship is our tithings. And I just want to quickly read you a verse that I, I read this morning. It was just something that uh, was constantly coming up during the week, week where it said, Remember your leaders who brought you the word of God and consider the result of their conduct 
that means their godly lives and imitate their faith. And when I read this scripture, there's two things that stand out. Is the fact that they have, uh, they say, consider the result of their conduct or of their godly lives. When we worship, when we give, when we tithe or uh, get into the moment, it's not just something that we do, it's something we are. It's a lifestyle that we bring forth. And then the second part is our faith. Um, I said it this morning as well. One of our leaders in Doxa Dale always says that God doesn't need our money. He needs our hearts. He needs who we are. And when we tithe, when we give, it's out of a place of faith by showing our trust in God. Not just for what He can do, but for who He is. And if that isn't the definition of worship, then I don't know. Getting to a place where you put all your trust, even your financial trust, in God Almighty. So I just want to quickly pray for us, but before I get there, just want to remind you of the envelopes where it says five ways to give. Um, there's a place where you can do EFT, debit orders, snap scan, bank cards, all those kind of things. But if you have cash on hand and you want to give or tithe like that, just make sure to put it in the envelope. There's plenty of boxes around the auditorium. You can just drop it in and we'll get it after the service. But before I give over to you, Juan, for the word this, uh, this evening, let's just bow our heads and pray together. Father, like I said, today we come with a thankful heart. Father, thank you for, for blessing us with all the spiritual gifts that we need, Father. And thank you for the opportunity that we can show our trust back to you. Father, I, I want to pray and thank everyone that's giving in this ministry, but also want to pray that you will bless them, not only tenfold, but hundredfold with what they are giving tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, then it's my privilege to welcome you on. To stage. You can give him a, a round of applause as well. He's a machine. Well, I hope I'm flesh and blood. And not, <laughs> not a machine. Listen, we've got a men's camp coming up um, at the end of August. However, it is critical that you start just uh, booking your space at the men's camp. You'll see there there's chalets, uh, six bed and four bed chalets available, but because the whole Dr. Day of family joins this camp, they are, the, the beds are running out very quickly, the, the chalets. Uh, so I think we will be all right-ish on the campsite, I think so. Uh, there should be, uh, uh, they, well, there's 93 available stands, six people on a stand, so we should be okay there. But if you are one of those that prefer the chalet, please make sure that at you at least just book your spot there. We are expecting... I would say around about a thousand men that um, join us on a camp like that uh, in uh, previous years. That's the sort of numbers we eat. So, and it's excellent. It's at Vieschiris. It's not the one where we go to the mountains and freeze almost to death. It's not that one. This is the one with a nice hot water swimming pool. And, you know, we just relax all day and we pray all day. And it's just going to be, it's going to be brilliant. So please don't miss out on that opportunity. We are in a sermon series where we talk about worship. We talk about the reason why we sing in church, why uh, that is so important. It's not just something we do to fill the time and because it's a you know, feel-good moment. It's, 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 there's so much spiritual significance behind worship and why we do this. I want to take you to this portion of Scripture in Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2, if you will follow on the screen with me. It says, so if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, or absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. I love the way he puts it, uh, Eugene Peterson in the message. He says, that's where the action is. See things from his perspective. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight is his perspective. But you know, when I, when I read this portion of scripture, it, it, there's two things that stood out for me. The one is don't walk around, don't shuffle around. You know, it's that, that idea of just shuffling eyes to the ground. You know, you're despondent, whatever. Life has just has, has become too difficult for you. You're just too busy. With the things right in front of you. 
and I had this picture. And thankfully, I found a picture or a video that displays something of this picture, gives this a, a bit of a meaning uh, and understanding. But also, the one where it says, look up and, and get God's perspective. And so, without further avail, let's show you the two videos quickly. You guys are welcome to play. Is that not magnificent? It is beautiful. I love it. It's, uh, it's just the difference between the two. I don't know if you've, you get dizzy as well watching that chicken going like this. I couldn't watch it. <laughs> you know, it makes me all dizzy. And, but, but think about that. In our lives, so often that's, what, that's how we go through life. It's just focusing on this right in front of us, you know, eyes to the ground. And, and uh, Paul calls us here yeah, to, to lift up our eyes and get the perspective from from God's point of view and so we are talking about worship but we, we're speaking within the context of the scripture in Revelation 4 verse 7 and this this is a picture of worship in heaven just to say it's a it's a picture of worship happening right now as we are speaking as we are engaging in worship this is happening in heaven you've got this host of angels out to God, holy, 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 around the throne. And then there's this picture of these four living creatures. So we also read about this in Ezekiel. You're welcome to go and read. Ezekiel also refers to this, but in John's reflection of this, it's four living creatures. And he talks about a, a creature with the face of a lion, and one with the face of a man, and another one with the face of an ox. And and then eventually lost one of a flying eagle. And that's what we want to just speak on tonight, is, is this worship from the perspective of the eagle, and what we can, can learn from that. But before we dive into that, let me just give you a bit of history. In the Old Testament, um, when they used to come together to worship, or their place of worship, before they built the temple was a tabernacle. That's where they would have the sacrifices. And as they were just, they were a nomadic tribe, so they, or people, they were traveling through the desert, through the wilderness, and as they did that, you know, um, they would set up this camp with the tabernacle where they would uh, worship and where they would bring the sacrifices, and the people were divided into 12 tribes, but these tribes gathered together four tribes at the time, and they would camp around the tabernacle, and that would be the layout. So the head tribes, if you, you can call them that, would be Judah, Dan, Ephraim, and Reuben. And each of these tribes would fly a banner. They would have a banner that's reflecting one of these four living creatures. Isn't that incre incredible? You know, already it was displaying something of the centrality of worship and these, these four ideas of the, the lion and, and the man and the eagle and, and the, the ox that's surrounding this place of worship. And so maybe you've heard of the Lion of Judah. We talk about that lot, a lot, or there's a scripture referring to that. There's songs that we sing about the Lion of Judah. That's where that comes from. That's where that was birthed from. 
And if you look at the eagle, you'll see it's, it's north. It's facing north, or it's uh, situated on the north side. And if you think about north, that's a reference point. That's a reference point. This morning, um, Christian corrected me and said, no, no, the blue bulls is the reference point. That's because they are north, you know. <laughs> but north gives us perspective of where we are. If you can, you know, if you can point to north, you know which direction, if you need to travel in that direction, where to go to. And so this is, this is the perspective of an eagle. This is the understanding we get from... Um, understanding the, the eagle. And so with that, you know, God comes as well and re, he reveals himself to us in many ways. But one of the pictures that the Bible show us is a picture of an eagle. Listen to this in uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 11. It says, and, and it, this is in reference to God. He was like an eagle hovering over its nest, overshadowing its young then spreading its wings and lifting them into the air, teaching them to fly. So he just uses this picture of an eagle to, to come and display something about who he is and his, his character. And that's what we want to delve into tonight. So we want to get this understanding of, of God from the perspective of an eagle. What's, why an eagle as one of these uh, living creatures around the throne? What does it want to tell us? What does it want to come and re reveal to us? One of the things that I jotted down is that worship elevates our thinking to God's level. If we talk about the perspective of an eagle, you know, you saw him as he was flying high. I don't know, did you see the city? Could you spot the city? It was Paris. Okay, I don't know if you saw the after tower there in the background. But, you know, just as he could look over the city, I'm sure when you walk around Paris, uh, I had people this morning that said to me, no, we were there, you know, and at, at, that looks a lot better. <laughs> we were there, and it's beautiful, but it's crazy, and it's busy, and the French, you know, they're difficult people. And, uh, but if you are up there, and you look down, at, at, you know, from this perspective, it changes everything. And so that's what worship does. It brings you into God's way of thinking, it brings you into God's perspective. That's what worship does. It elevates our thinking to God's level. I mentioned this last time, you know, God does not need our worship. He's not in need of our worship. He goes, if he goes through a week and nobody worshipped him on earth, you know, then he's a little bit down and depressed. No, worship is created for us to change us, to bring us into a space where God is. Because where he is between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that interaction and that communication that happens there is perfect. It's all God needs. He created us, and He created us to worship for our own goodness, for us. He, he actually made space for us. He invited us into the perfect place of the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so, there's three things that I just want to speak about in the context of the eagle. The first thing is we know that the eagle soars. I mean, that's one of the beauty, the beautiful things. If you love to go out to, to um, uh, the Voltaine, that one, Kruger, the Kruger National Park. If you love to go out there and you, if you love the fish eagle, you know, I, I love the fish eagle, that call that uh, they just call out, you know, it's so beautiful. But if you watch them, you can see them soar. It's, it's a beautiful sight, something a, an eagle does. But what's fascinating is um, the way that the parents teach the young eagles to fly. Obviously, they can't fly when they are born. They sit in the nest, and mom feeds them. But then the parents come, especially the mother, would come and she would soar down uh, until she just hovers just above the, the nest, and she will start flapping her wings. And that's just to get the chicklet going, you know, just to get them all excited, and they also start flapping their wings. But yes, the reality is if that... That little bird would jump off the cliff or in the tree or wherever the, the, the nest was built. Um, and they would just flap their wings. They, they wouldn't be able to fly. Because the bird, an eagle, is too heavy uh, for, for, 
for that bird just to be able to clap, clap their wings, flap their wings, and, and, and fly. What they need to do is they need to spread out their wings and soar through the sky, soar through the thermals in the sky. So when, when you read about the eagles, you'll see that they, they, um, they use their wings, flapping their wings about 20% of the time, just to get them into direction, give them a little bit of lift. But they actually saw 80% of the time conserving energy, you know, that results for them staying up in the air for so much longer. They've got a wingspan of 2.5 meters. So, you know, they were built. God put them together for this purpose to be able to soar without spending a lot of energy. Listen to the scripture in Zechariah 4, 6. It says, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Listen, so often we go through life flapping our wings. And I know we don't have wings, but you get the picture. We like those chickens on our way to KFC. <laughs> and we don't know what's waiting for us. <laughs> No, but seriously, we go through life trying so hard, doing our best, putting it all out there, you know, and trying to please God and, and make things work. But, but God has, has put us together that we will soar uh, on, on the power, through the power of the Holy Spirit, like, like an eagle soar with its wings on, on the thermals of the wings. Man, we, we, we weren't built to try and impress God and... And the same is true in, within the context of our worship. You don't have to do a lot of things to please God through worship. You just have to have a sincere heart. When we worship and we jump up and down, and whatever way you love to do that, or you, whether you lift up your hands in worship, whether you shout with praise, even though you can't hold you know, a single note, it doesn't matter. God looks straight into your heart. He looks at your heart. And he loves a beautiful heart that, that comes from a place of sincerity. We don't have to perform in worship. We don't worship because we want to see results. We don't worship because we want to see the fire fall, you know, and see people healed and, and see people being saved and see people being changed. That's not the core reason for our worship, although we love it when that happens. Why do we worship? Because He is worthy, that's why. It's the only reason we need. He is worthy to receive glory and honor and praise no matter what. No matter the circumstances, no matter how difficult it is in our lives. You know, no matter whether it's, 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 uh, it's a good season or a bad season in our lives. He's still worthy to be praised. No matter whether... You know, they, the worship team got the court right or not. He's still worthy to be praised. However, when, when we do get into that space, that is the result. People are changed. People are saved. People are being healed in that moment. Stuff starts happening in an incredible way, not through our own doing, but just because we, we get up to a perspective where we start seeing and experiencing the heavenlies. What, what, what God wants to show us and what God wants to do us if we just move into that space. The second thing I want to talk on is um, the fact that an eagle, the way it approaches a storm, or the way it looks at the, the storm, you know, most other birds, they will fly away. When they know there's a storm coming, they will, you know, some of them, they fly to another continent when they know the weather changes. Um, but for those birds that can't, they'll fly away, they'll find a nice space, maybe, you know, just somewhere um, in a tree or sitting on the wire and, and it will start raining and the wind blowing and you see these miserable birds and they sit there, you know, just waiting out the storm, fluff up the fed, feathers and, and, you, and, you know, if you watch them, you feel sorry for them because <laughs> they're out there and they, they just look miserable and, until... Obviously, until the storm has moved over, and then they'll sing. But, but here's what the eagle does. The eagle heads straight for the storm. It doesn't fear the storm. And the reason for that is because these thermals are very active 
when there's a storm. And so they know that, and they'll fly right into the storm, right into the thermals, and then they'll start soaring upwards, flying upwards, upwards. They can fly up to 4.5 kilometers up in the air. And so they'll just go up until they're on top of the storm, and they're looking down at the storm, and then, you know, this exhilarating thrill ride they have going up the storm. And they conquer the storm. This is what God has called you and me uh, for. It's, it's not to fear the storm. It's but to, to take the storm head on. Because our God is bigger than the storm. He walked upon the waters when there was a storm out on the sea. He walked on top of the waters. That which the disciples feared, we're going to drown. You know, these experienced fishermen that just, they've been working their whole lives, all their lives they've been working on the, on the sea. They know the waters, and when they are afraid, you know this is, this is not some little, puny little storm. This is serious stuff. And Jesus comes walking upon the water. He walks on top of the water, that which they fear. And he speaks with authority. He speaks over the storm. And this is what God wants to just awaken within us. Listen to this, Isaiah forty thirty one. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the the picture again, once again. It's not through your strength. It's not through my strength that we look the storm in the eye, that we move into that direction where things are difficult. It's, It's our understanding that when we wait upon the Lord, and this is where worship comes in, These moments of just being quiet or these moments of just declaring the realities, the truths of who God is and who I am in Him, we start rising in our spirit. It's like riding the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Those thermals, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit comes and He picks you up, starts building you, starts building your faith, starts bringing your mind into perspective that you see and understand as God does. And it brings you into authority over your storm. And the storm is probably still there and it might still be there for a while. But the reality is you have a new understanding of, of your position and who God made you to be within that situation. That's why I love the scripture that I mentioned earlier on in Colossians where it says, Why are you shuffling along eyes to the ground? Absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up. Look up, think upon the things that are up there. When I say up there, obviously God is not only up there, He's here, He's within you, He's here with us. But wherever we go, we will find Him right there, in the valleys and on the hills. And so this is just this understanding of of the the bigger picture that God sees and, and He's inviting us into that space to come and see with him to come and experience with him. So you see, I, I know there's plenty of storms out there. And maybe some of you are facing a storm right now. It might be a financial storm or a physical, with uh, your physical health or maybe a relationship. There are storms out there and they, they, they're a reality and sometimes they are scary. But God wants to come and remove the fear that's in your heart. Because sometimes we, we, the, we, there's no way around the storm. Sometimes there's no heading away from the storm. It's going to catch up with you. Sometimes it's just going through that storm. That's why in Psalm 23, David says, yeah, even though we, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know if you've noticed that. You know, it's, it's not, yay. God's going to take us around the valley of the shadow of death. No, it's, yay, even though we go through this valley. What does he say? He says we're not going to sit still there and just take it. He says, no, we're going to go through. Why? Because God is with us. And it's the same with, with the picture I'm giving you right now. The eagle soars up in that storm. So that he can reign over the storm. God's calling you to a place where he says, 
through you, I will reign over the storm. Don't fear it. The last one I want to just point out to you is um, this incredible sight that the eagle has. I don't know if you've seen an eye of an eagle. It's almost the size of, a, of the eye of a human. And in proportion to its little head, it just, it's massive. It looks massive. It's big. And the reason for that is because um, an eagle has super excellent vision. They have brilliant, brilliant vision. They can see 3.2 kilometers away. That's how far they can, can spot the prey. Um, their eyesight is eight times better than yours and mine. Eight times better. That means if you stand on top of a building, right on top of a, a building, and you look down, you will be able to read what somebody's typing on their phone down in the street. Okay? It's, they have excellent Excellent vision to just put this more into perspective for you is we have 200,000 light sensitive cells per square millimeter on, on the uh, retina of our eyes. An eagle has one million. One million. They say that when you, they're right up there and they look down, they spot the, the urine uh, trail of a, of a mice or a rat or a a bunny. That's how they follow them. That's how they spot them. They just have this excellent, excellent, excellent vision. The way that they see. And, and here's the thing with the perspective of an eagle. God invites us into that space because God sees differently. He sees much further than you do. He sees much deeper when he looks into your heart, when he looks into your neighbor's heart, when he looks into that person, perhaps where you have a difficult relationship with, he sees right through the things that you look and, you know, that's, that's what stops you to, to be in relationship further with this person or where it makes the relationship difficult. The f- things that frustrate you, God looks through that. He looks through that. Your situation, he looks beyond that. He sees your tomorrow. He sees your future. The Bible says he knows the future that he, that he has planned for you. It's a good future. One way he wants to prosper you. In one way he wants you to see you blossom and flourish. That's what God sees. And he's inviting us into that space to say, come see as I see. He sees eternity. And he knows in eternity that, you know, the, the story is ended. Jesus ended it on the cross of Gol- Golgotha. Did I say that right? <laughs> Jesus ended the, the battle. He ended everything when he died on the cross. And he's brought us, he brought us into that space. He says, that's why the Bible talks about, you know, we are more than conquerors. Because we are invited into this space. But we don't always see, we don't always feel like more than conquerors. Especially when the storm hits. But here's the key. When that eagle spots its prey, when he sees it, doesn't matter how far away, the reality is he's, he only sees it. He hasn't taken hold of it yet. He, hasn't, he doesn't have the, the meal he's, going to, he's about to enjoy. You know, he's... He still has to dive down. He still has to go and get it. His circumstance, if he's hungry and he's looking around spotting and he spotted um, the prey or what he's going to eat, he's still hungry. Circumstances ha- hasn't changed. And, and this is true for worship. This is the picture that I want you to see in worship. Worship is seeing the way God sees even though circumstances haven't changed yet. And maybe things still have to happen. And maybe there's still things that you are going to have to do. You're praying for work, you know, trusting God for a job. Uh, That that doesn't mean you go home and sit and wait, you know, till the telephone ring and the CEO of Virgin Active is phoning you and said, I'm I'm looking for a replacement. I think you're going to fit the bill, you know. No, no, no. You've you've got to get your CV together. And there's things that you've got to do, obviously. But with worship, yes, this is the picture I want to uh, convey to you tonight. Is that when we worship, when we sing about the goodness of God, when we sing, you know, that 
there's healing in the name of Jesus. When we sing about, you know, we are no longer slaves. And though it feels like, man, I'm a slave of Absa because I owe them so much money. That's it. When, when there's realities in this world that contradicts what you're singing, so often we, we'll think, you know, God, I can't sing this. That guy on stage, he looks so happy. You're a good, good father. I don't feel that way. Because this is my circumstance. Listen again. Your worship elevates your thinking to God's level. You start calling those things that are not as though they are. It's called faith. It's called something that brings you into that space where you start trusting God, believing God, gives you hope, gives you perspective, tells you the story that this storm won't last forever. Whatever the difficulty is that you're facing, it doesn't have eternity written over it. No, it has an expiry date. You have eternity written all over you. You are made to be in an eternal being, being, being. And when we are saved, when we are brought into new life, that new life starts at that moment you give your heart to Christ. And so that too shall pass. And worship reminds you of that. Worship brings you into that space, that perspective where you understand, God, I know who I am. I know who you are. And I know whatever is bothering me right now has got to go away. And you start worshiping from that eternal perspective. And so perhaps tonight you, you've um, come expecting something from God. Maybe you've got questions in your heart. You know, you keep questioning God, saying, God, I'm seeking for answers in this area, or I'm trusting th- for a breakthrough in that area. Or perhaps, you know, you feel like that chicken and you say, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than this. And God wants to invite you into that space to say, come and see. Come see what I see. Come and get an eternal perspective over your life, over what God wants for you. Perhaps it's over your neighbor. Or perhaps it's, it's over your school where your children are. Or I don't know, but God wants to invite you into this space. Here's the one thing I can say. I, don't, I, I haven't seen an eagle sitting on a fence ever in my life. I don't know if they do that. I don't think they do. They, they're not fence sitters. <laughs> they hit straight for the storm. And they saw. And in worship, we can't be fence sitters. We can't be, you know, who's just sitting on the fence waiting for this to pass. The greatness and the glory and the uh, majesty of Jesus calls us into a space where we, co- we cannot do anything else but to call out the truths about God and who we are in Him. And so tonight, that's what we want to do. We want to invite you into that space. God wants to invite you into that space to worship. So let's stand and we'll end off the service with with just a moment of worship.
you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God and All my life you have been faithful and All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Yes, I will sing the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Your goodness is running after, it's running after me With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Your goodness is running after, it's running after me With my life laid down, I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me and All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Yes, I will sing Of the goodness of God Yes, I will sing Of the goodness of God And I will sing Of the goodness of God You unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fear are gone child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child
עכשיו הפקרה. From my mother's womb You have chosen me Love has called my name And I've been born again Into your family Your blood flows through my veins And I'm no longer child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear And I am a child of God songs of deliverance We've been liberated from our bondage We're the sons and the daughters Let us Sing our space of worship, this moment of just acknowledging who He is, who I am. If the storm is too much for you tonight, this, if you're battling to sing, you know, I'm no longer a slave of fear, knowing that you are fearing the storm. It's getting the better of you, whatever it might be, whatever it might represent. So we want to do a prayer for you tonight. We want to stand with you. We, we want you to have this understanding that you are not alone. God has surrounded you with love, with people, with songs of deliverance. He's surrounding you with victory. We know it doesn't feel that way now, but that's, that's where prayer comes in and joins with worship to change your thinking, your understanding. So 
that's you, if you just want to take a moment and you just want to lift your hand and say, that's me, I'm just, you include me in that prayer. So I'm going through the, that storm. I'm in that space right now. If that's you, just put up your hand. So I'm going to do a prayer. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So let's just close our eyes. Just as we trust in God. With those that are standing, say, Lord, I'm trusting you for this storm. I'm trusting you for breakthrough. Trusting you for answers. I'm, my hope is in you. My hope is in you, Lord. I want to pray where hope has been deferred, where, where the enemy has come in to come and steal joy and to take away the understanding of our everlasting hope and joy that we have in you. I pray, Lord, that you will come and break that in Jesus' name. You will bring the truth of who you are and who we are in you into every circumstance, every difficult situation right now in Jesus' name. We pray for your wisdom and clarity. We pray for your perspective to come and change the way we think, to change the way we see, to change the way we act, Lord. What we do, what we say. That would, that would start functioning from a place of victory. We are not working or praying or fighting for victory tonight. We are walking in victory because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. And so now we are calling those circumstances into, into obedience of what your word is and that has been spoken over every person that's putting up their hand saying, Lord, I'm trusting you. I don't know how I'm going to get through the storm I don't have the answers, Lord. I don't know if I have the strength. The Lord says, wait upon me. I will give you strength like an eagle. You will soar upon high. Lord, I'm praying for that breakthrough. I'm praying for the answer. I'm praying for that thing that they are trusting for. That in, in this moment that we can call upon that and say, Lord, will you provide? Will you give? Will you... Heal, will you restore what needs to be restored? As we're standing here, we are singing over all of our people. We are no longer slaves to fear. We will not walk out here and fear these difficult situations any longer. We'll walk right into it and see what God's going to do. Our hope is in you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're welcome to be seated for one last time. So great having you here. Uh, if you're going on leave, we uh, trust that you will enjoy that. If not, um, come hang around. We, we will still be here. Quibis is on leave. Um, we, we told him he, he's not allowed to send us pictures because he's in Margate. Um, he's uh, having a well-deserved uh, rest with his wife and uh, Christian and them, they're going tomorrow, so we bless them as well. And, uh, for, but for the rest of you, thank you for being here tonight, and may you enjoy your week. Have a wonderful week. Don't be in too much of a hurry. There's uh, some, some nice coffee. And remember, if you're here for the first time, then Yaku is going to build you an incredible cappuccino. I understand. So we want to just say thank you for being here. God bless you, and we see you next time, uh, next week, same time, same place. Thank you very much.